Pastos Biology Topics from the Study Guide Let's look at the electron transport system, the most efficient ATP generating system in a cell. This is shown in figure 3-32 in your study guide. Now the essence of the electron transport system is a system of cytochromes, and in this diagram we'll abbreviate them CYT. Now these cytochromes, these are permanent molecules in the cell designed to be alternatingly oxidized and reduced by giving and taking electrons. It generates ATP by a process called oxidative phosphorylation. You can think of that as the addition of phosphate to ADP to produce ATP with the use of oxygen or think of it as a series of alternating oxidations and reductions. I've put an R in parentheses if the cytochrome is in the reduced state and an O for the oxidized state. Basically what happens is a pair of electrons enter one end of the system and are picked up by the oxidized cytochrome causing it to become reduced. Now this immediately turns right around and becomes reoxidized, handing off its electrons to the next cytochrome. The next cytochrome becomes reduced and immediately passes its electrons to the third. It becomes then reduced and the previous one has become oxidized. This reduced coenzyme then becomes oxidized, handing off the electrons to another one, and that one becomes reduced. Here's a summary of the role of the cytochromes in the electron transport system. Finally, the last cytochrome has to get rid of its electrons so it can become re-oxidized and it gives up its electrons to what we can call a final electron acceptor. Now this final electron acceptor accepts the electrons, becomes reduced, into an end product. Now it would be nice if this final electron acceptor was abundant, easily reduced, easily transported into the cells, and harmless when it becomes the end product. And it turns out there's just such a substance available. It's oxygen. So the oxygen picks up the pair of electrons at the same time, it picks up some hydrogen, and just assume that hydrogen is always available, and it becomes the end product, water, H2O. Now, in reality, there are many, many other components of the electron transport system, a variety of different proteins, and uh, you can see these in an animation, uh, which we'll show you shortly. The real electron transport system has many, many proteins, 40 different proteins, uh, molecules called cytochromes, iron sulfur centers. The proteins become large enzyme complexes arranged within the membrane. It looks something like this. Here are these proteins, these protein complexes, with some others. Let's put them all in the inner membrane of the mitochondria, like this. Now here's the inner membrane of the mitochondria. These strange looking objects are various protein complexes embedded within the membrane. The electrons flow from one complex to another, as you saw, and as they do that, Protons, hydrogen ions, are pumped from one side of the membrane to the other. Now there's one other protein complex in the membrane, and that's this, ATP synthase. What this complicated molecule does is pump the hydrogen back through to the other side of the membrane, and in so doing, provides energy to generate ATP. Notice that each cytochrome must be 
transformed back into the oxidized state before it can accept electrons from the previous cytochrome. So, for example, this cytochrome in the oxidized state has accepted a pair from the previous, becoming reduced. In the reduced state, it cannot accept any more electrons from the previous cytochrome. It must hand its electrons off and become reoxidized. Now this can cause a problem. For example, cyanide is a deadly poison because it blocks this last step in the electron transport system. When that happens, the last cytochrome, which is in the reduced state, cannot be reoxidized to make to be able to accept electrons from the previous cytochrome, and the whole system clogs up. Now, if the flow of electrons stops, what happens to the generation of ATP? It stops. If the generation of ATP stops, what happens to the cell? It dies. What happens to the human when the cell dies? The human dies. Now, in this transfer of electrons from one end to the other through the cytochromes, energy is made available to link phosphate and ADP to generate ATP. And very often, three ATPs are generated for each pair of electrons. Another question we might ask is, where do these electrons come from that enter the electron transport system? Well, it turns out they come from reduced coenzymes, the NADH2 and the FADH2. And we'll see shortly where these reduced coenzymes come from. So this is a look, a very simplified schematic look, at the electron transport system and the flow of electrons from one end to the other.